This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Live from Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, it is the Awesome Cast, episode 362. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Twitter, the Twitter. Uh, I'm here to, uh, with uh, some friends ready to get geeky and talk technology. The people using it, myself, a video producer and podcast here in the Pittsburgh area. We also have with us from Big Bank International Esquire, it's John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going? Coming over loud and clear today. Loud and clear, and uh, we if you're on the video, yeah, we, we had a little bit of tech updates, you know, we're getting at least into this decade uh, with some of this technology, <laughs> so hopefully you're looking and sounding better for everybody out there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was responding to chat chat room stuff. <laughs> chat fine. room. That's fine. We also have in studio a great crew on the couch for us. Katie, do this. She is the, the stuff has so, the, the scare house. <laughs> stuff and things. Just, uh, wait, stuff and things. Wait, which one of us is director, on the Director of stuff and things at the uh, scare house. The shenanigan, shenanigan stuff maker. Stuff and shenanigans no, at the, the scare uh, house. <laughs> uh, media director. No, that's not right. No. Damn it, why can't Sound. I remember? Why Social can't I ever media. remember this? Social Which day is Oh, sales and marketing. Yes. Hey! Yay! Yay! I thought you forgot for a minute. No, I was going to say, what day a week, on, you know, what day during the week do we do a Scarehouse Weekly Live? That's true. Oh, oh, wait, wait, oh, that mm-hmm. is Fridays. Yay! You pay attention to me. I feel like a valued guest. <laughs> uh. Not like they make you feel in the Mayhem show. <laughs> <laughs> also with us back in the new studio and full of tacos. <laughs> That's right. I'm e- eating my way through Beach View. Crazy Kraus, Ron Kraus has joined us once again. Our uh, 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 Windows, our Windows junkie, <laughs> that, who brought us swag today. I can, we, can you hand me that? I mean, we we we're amongst other things. Oh no! Oh no! Okay, if you guys are on video, we got uh, we got little Office 365 champions swag here in the, in the, the office champions. now, which works because we do use three. Well, at least one of us uses Office 365. So there you go. I, I don't know. It's, oh, why did it get the half mast? What does that mean? Does that mean the server's down? <laughs> if, if the Office 365 flag is at half mast. Okay, moving along. <laughs> okay, we're back. Uh, this is, anyways, hey, thanks for coming back. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me. Swag. <laughs> and um, this is the Awesome Cast, and like I said, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Music. I never say that enough. We are on Google Music. It's not on my list. I need to add oh. it to the list. I think it's a little difficult because we're not technically a music show, so it just kind of skips your brain. This is true. No, they have a podcast section. Yeah, well, I mean, a podcast is iTunes, so, Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes with it. And we we are officially on there, all your fine podcasty places. Video versions, of course, on the Facebook and the uh, YouTube for um, Awesome Cast. You can also join us here live every Tuesday, and there's some shenanigans and maybe... We're stuffing stuff in our noses or whatever the case may be on a live stream that you won't see anywhere else. We nope, save that for no. gold. Gold? <laughs> That's for gold. Somebody's <laughs> usually eating pizza on a microphone. It's great. 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time Live at awesomecast.net or the uh, live stream over at the Facebook page for Awesome Cast. And also a big shout out to our friends at riversedgepgh.com um, and the 405 Media for carrying us on those, uh, our live stream. Not live, but our streaming partners over there uh, carrying us um, um, on their on their networks. 
And a big shout out to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, Matt Weller with the Coffee Club at the $5 level, Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter, as well as the uh, Michael Fedor Show on Mike Fedor Show on Twitter, uh, joining us at the fan of the show level. You guys uh, supporting the show and uh, at literally helping keep the lights on in the new studio. And uh, check it out, patreon.com slash awesomecast. And we give you guys a little bit extra gold for the week. I include some new features that we were kind of talking about. They kind of a little more of a deep dive a lot of times, uh, especially with Chili and I. <laughs> so, um, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. And I think the perfect thing to start this is Katie's awesome thing. Oh dang! Uh, my awesome thing includes cats because I <laughs> like cats, and there should be more cats in our lives. And cats should be backing up our cats. Uh, cat blaze. <laughs> so you never lose a cat file again with the world's easiest cloud backup. All I've obtained from this website is it's a backup for my cat photos and cat shenanigans. Um, it's something, it's a cloud based thing. It appears to be. But my favorite part, because this is the problem, is I can't get past the, the cat scan part where they're actually like rubbing the tech on the cat to scan the cat. But uh, yes, a back blaze is what it's called. And it's only fifty dollars a year. Ooh, ah. Ooh, I haven't seen that yearly option. So, so this is it's basically Backblaze, and we we actually have a banner up for Backblaze uh, as a mm-hmm. little affiliate thing on AwesomeCast.com. And full yes. disclosure, and I, I saw this the other day, and it was the it was the anime gif of them rubbing like a hard drive on the side of a of a, of a cat. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 actually, AJ, you know, contributor, old contributor to the show, uh, retweeted it. I was like, okay, that's that's great. It needs to be shared. Um, but uh, you know, kind of kind of just a fun uh, yeah, like front it. end for their uh, backblaze service <laughs> so yeah I, I like it. it's kind of fun because it's not expected this is like would be more of a uh, april fool's kind of joke but it's it's more of a fun ad it might have been do you know what i mean like i don't know yeah. maybe it, maybe it's still hung around but it's uh, i like it better appearing now versus like then because <laughs> i appreciate it. but yeah you can back up all your cat based everything and just a good reminder in general is like, hey, guys, um, make sure you do back up your stuff. And, and, and actually, these are the people I use uh, for, for our stuff. And we back up everything here in the studio through Backblaze. And, and, and kind of a, it, it's a nice, easy solution. I plug in way too many hard drives and it completely backs them all up. Uh, so it, it's a pretty good option. So, Ron, what's your awesome thing of the week? Well, I don't actually own it yet. Well, I own it. I've paid for it. <laughs> But um, I've ordered the Pixel C over the weekend. Um, I've been wanting for a while now because of the job I do at Big Bank International and things. Esquire. Uh, I wanted the Android experience, the full Android experience, the native Android experience. Mm, He's going native on us. So I decided to um, pick the Pixel C. And actually, thanks to John, I'm not sure if it was last week's show or the week before, where he made the statement, buy it now or wait forever. And it, I heard that and I was like, you know what? He's right. I need to buy this. So I pulled the trigger and I bought it on Saturday. And according to Google, it'll be here on Friday. So that's great. My case is sitting at home that I ordered from Amazon. <laughs> So I'll have to get that off the porch once I actually make it home today. And is that is that the keyboard like we're seeing in some of these pictures? No, I just ordered a basic case for it. Okay. Um, this device, and it's a shame too, because I was going to bring it with me. Mm-hmm. This device is going to replace at home what I call my couch computer. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a first generation Windows RT device. Yes, John, I know you don't like it. <laughs> But it was the greatest couch computer ever created. It's all you need, right? It's all you need. I mean, it, it's it's kind of like, well, you know, an iPad is all you need for X, Y, and Z. We were talking about right. a little bit before the show. Yes. Yeah. So, but so this is going to replace my RT device. Um, it currently has three or four pixel rows that are completely out on it. And like I said, I was talking to my wife about it over the weekend because you know. Whenever you're going to make a financial decision, you always clear it with the boss. Uh, nah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I did. So, um, you know, and we were talking about it over the weekend, and I was like, you know what? John said I need to do this. And so I said, honey, I'm doing it. And she was like, great. So we did. Yay. So what, what device are you – so I, I will say I have my 
Windows RT Ooh. device. There it is. Ooh. It has a nice spot up on the shelf here. Oh. Uh, dust. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think it's been turned on in, oh boy, a long, Did long you time. Did blow on that? What? She, she asked if you just blew on that. No. <laughs> um, but it, the, the RT device, the, I, I, I had hoped that it was going to gain more traction. It, I think I think you definitely made the right choice with the Pixel C. I'm interested in to see how quickly you get Oreo and your your view of it. Obviously, you have you have an Android device mm-hmm. as your as your day to day carry device. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly you pick up on what the difference between the native experience is and some of the additional experiences you get with with other manufacturers devices and that's exactly what i'm looking for you know because right now i have a samsung device is like john said it's my daily carry so it will be nice to have that you know same very similar experience but yet it'll still be different and the pixels the nexuses they've you know for, for a while now i've been getting all of the beta versions of the os which is something else I'm very interested in having access to. So, which is another finally another why. person that appreciates betas. Oh, I love <laughs> betas. I can't. Come on, I'm in a production environment. I can't de- rely on that. <laughs> I just, I just need a lot of spare computers. What what device do you have on the couch today? I see. I told you he was going to do it. <laughs> it's an I iPad. Oh, I, I know. There's a camera in the upper corner, so it, it's definitely not a Microsoft device. Yes, it's the <laughs> iPad. I told before we started this show, I said, <laughs> John is going to give me a hard time because I'm holding an iPad. But I didn't want to bring my 17 inch laptop. Yes, I didn't want to carry my 17 inch <laughs> laptop with me today, all day at work, and then over to here. So it's an iPad. Oh, the Microsoft the guys carrying an iPad. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Shame. 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 Yeah. So the Microsoft guy is. Well, the sad part is, is I have two of these in my bag every single day. It with an Android device. Wait, yes. wait, wait. wait, wait, wait some crosses. You say you have two of those in your bag every day. Every single day. What were you saying, Chilla? I said that the Microsoft guy is swapping out his iPad for Android. Yes, I am. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm that's a very, that's a very RT device. That's a very judging. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> RT. Ooh. Windows Ooh. RT. Mm-hmm. 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 What's well, a good upgrade? It's a good upgrade, and, and that's a. I mean, so okay. So we don't think we got like what is what is kind of the appeal of this Pixel other than it's that pure experience? Is it just a? Well, um, it's the Tegra. One processor, so it's not a like brand new processor or anything. By that, it's gonna be pretty stretch. powerful. It's gonna be it's sixty four gigs of internal storage. Okay, um, it does have it's a. All- I wouldn't say a graphics card because it's not, but there is some extra graphics horsepower. I got to bring up the link again. And this is a ten inch kind of regular iPad. Right, ten size. inch, yeah, ten inch tablet. Mm-hmm. So. I really like what they did with the key their their, their native keyboard for this because this is the one that has like the magnetic yep. cling. I almost bought it. It was a yeah. hundred dollars. Oof. But yeah, it's hard. Well, there you go, John Chichilla. What is your awesome that's thing me. of the week? Yes, that's you. My awesome th- my awesome thing of the week is Apple, and I'm I'm guessing it's due to one of the other news stories down here and something. It, it, Google did as well today around AR, but Apple released a a slew of AR kit information along with AR kit um, apps that are coming from uh, major developers. So I'm guessing these are going to be kind of the launch titles mm-hmm. um, that we're going to see. So, and we've seen the, the concept for um, IKEA's app. The Food Network has one. What? What caught me as, you know, obviously a lot of game game companies are going to be behind, be behind this at launch. There's an arise, and the, the one I'm interested in is the Walking Dead Our World. Oh, so you're going to have an AR kit-based um, Walking Dead kind of almost 3D run around, go hunt 
the 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 zombies. What what I'm interested in is if we thought we had a problem with people walking out into <laughs> oh traffic playing Pokemon. <laughs> This is going to create a whole new slew of, of zombies. Problems. Of zombies. Zombie <laughs> problems, yes. <laughs> Hashtag um, first world zombie problems. The, the, the other thing I, I found interesting is one of the, the other launch titles is, is Giphy World. Um, G-I-P-H-Y. For, for those of you who are familiar with their apps, it's pretty much the just a large internet archive of, of online GIFs. You're going to be able to take GIFs and overlay them on all of your typical photos, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, and I'm actually excited too. There's they're they're doing some children's books, so I thought it was interesting. Like they, if you've ever read the the Very Hungry Caterpillar, which I've read numerous times, um, they're they're kind of bringing that into to an AR environment, and I think it's going to be interesting. The storytelling that can take place, kind of in that 3D world, will be very interesting for a kid to now pick up, get a story, and be able to actually walk around an environment with oh, potential objects. My hungry pet caterpillar AR. That's fun. That's I mean, that's a book that I grew up on. Is it a book you okay? So you so oh, yeah. you're at least familiar with. I had never heard of it until Christopher got it. Oh yeah, and we read it. We read it constantly. It was my favorite ones when I was in grade school. That always grabbed from the library. So that's cool. Sorg. Yes. Admit that you just picked it up from the library last week. Last week. Last week when we were there for for some podcasting stuff. Oh, that's awesome. So this is this is again kind of rolling out some of the big AR stuff we were talking about. And and stuff that you know people that aren't interested in Pokemon and and this is more than I mean you know we we've all kind of played with the Pokemon thing and it doesn't work great you know um, but uh, but but no I, I like how these are looking so it would be fun to play with those and they know should work on most phones that we have right yep it'll it's it's they claim it's going to work on anything that runs iOS 11 so mm. now they are cutting some of the iPhone I think they're cutting back to the iPhone five. Um, so the, pretty much the iPhone 5S and above and the iPad Air and above. Nice. So pretty much anything with a touch ID sensor. So my awesome thing of the week is Windows 7. <laughs> because well, <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's brand new. Because it's new. Hey, if you it's haven't used it in a, if you haven't used it in a while, it's new to you. Mm. And it is... <laughs> No, so we, we've had a lot of, I mean, we have older computers here in the studio, and, and I'm trying to cycle some things in and kind of update a little bit. We, we cycled in, hopefully, hopefully, like I said, we chill it looks a little bit better because we're, we put our, like, a nice i5 laptop over there. Um, so we're, like, you know, hopefully able to, you know, yeah, I mean, I think it looks things a little bit better. I don't know, make noises. <laughs> And 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 one of those was we had this computer. It's it's a Core Two Duo, so it's like you know still pretty hefty. And we're cycling out old stuff that was always slow, like an old iMac that we had. It's like ten years old, and and we're just kind of hitting that 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 point where Windows XP just literally will not work on some websites anymore. Like Chrome isn't updating anymore. So it's like all right, we got to get less old. So I I found my copy floating around of a. Uh, uh, Windows 7 upgrade disk, and we threw it on there, and that's what you guys have been seeing every time we pull up a website. So if you're if you if you miss Arrow, as opposed to the flat design of your Windows 10 these days, guys, look at the glassiness. Look at that. That's impressive, isn't it? I need to turn it off so it's not. Go ahead. Glassy's coming back. They're gonna they're gonna bring it back with fluent design. There you go. You see that? You see that? I'm a <laughs> Windows hipster. Do you like that, guys? I'm a Windows hipster. Bring the glass back before it comes cool again. So, uh, so I'm ahead of the curve. So I, I, th th that's all I have. That's like the only you, you can do. You can just tell people you're running like a, a pre-release version of an uh, of even non-beta Windows <laughs> 10 code. <laughs> exactly. It's like, hey, all the cool kids will have it in a little bit. I'll be on your Xbox. It'll be on everything. So, um, also awesome thing. I had to teach Missy how to use the Xbox One the other day. So I was happy she got into that. So. Is that your awesome thing of the week? She's just looking at me. Hey, Ooh. Cortana. No. Xbox <laughs> on. I haven't set that up yet. I still haven't set up like the connect and everything like that. So and I was lucky enough I got a connect one. So very specifically looked out for that. All right, guys. You know what else is awesome? Our good friends. You know, we were talking about 
Um, Ron is uh, is uh, is eating his way through Beachview. Yeah, of course, check right. out the taco stand, which is amazing across the street here, and it just eats his. It's just a taco grill staring at us from across the tracks. Uh, but anyways, but he also still had to partake. Uh, our good friend Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time here, right up the tracks here in Beachview. Look at that stuff. As well as Main Street down in Carnegie, PA, as well as the PNC Park. Did you know if you're downtown, Uber Eats will, will deliver you some Slice on Broadway, Ron? They will deliver what? it to McKee's Rocks. To McKee's Rocks, what? even. Yes. Slice on Broadway is citywide now. Thanks to to them. Uber and Eats. I think there might be, is there Grubhub on that side of town? Or there's a uh, Postmates or somebody was delivering too, I thought. Um, so there you go. If you're not in these areas, if you're not hitting up a ball game, it is accessible to you. So please check them out. Our good friends supporting us, SliceOnBroadway.com. And uh, PJH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Let them know the awesome cast sent you okay i did not prep anything else to talk about in my document so this is me stalling while i should have been oh hey there's an article i saw in my email today from next pittsburgh um dot com and uh, it, we actually talked about this before but it was a little more if you want some more information on the um i think it's a rapid transit smart signal system um they're going to put together a uh, smart signals are part of a 30 million dollar plan to beat be traffic pain blah, blah, blah. Traffic jams in Pittsburgh. Um, and this is, you know, I worked the um, XPRIZE AI um, kind of kickoff. They had the, some people from Uber, had people from this, um, you know, uh, Rapid Rapid Flow, I think is the name of the company uh, back in the day. And uh, again, kind of make, getting a little bit of press here. It's a CMU spin out, Rapid Flow Technologies. And uh, there was a great sample in here about like exactly how this is going to do. So if you're familiar with Pittsburgh, there's a stretch of, of streets um, mainly Center Avenue and Baum Boulevard, where just everybody gets stuck in the middle of the city, right? Uh, it kind of connects like kind of downtownish Bigelow Boulevard to East Liberty and m- mainly Whole Foods and Target. Uh, let's be honest, uh, especially this weekend with the, um, the 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 students coming in, which was cited in this article too. Um, and I saw the madhouse that was Target on on student move-in weekend. It was insane. Because it's like the only place like that in the city that the kids can go to, it seems, um, or know to go to for for life things, I guess. Um, but it's talking about like you know if, if there's a big flux on something like that, like all the students are like running you know to that on, on the weekend, or 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 other events, or um, you know just general day to day rush hour traffic, it, it'll it'll assess how much traffic is coming through the intersections or the intersections before and time those lights a little smartly to, you know, in response to that and hopefully help uh, alleviate traffic jams. I believe the system is already um, working around the East Liberty area. And they are also looking to uh, uh, connect downtown in Oakland integrated into the plan as well. So basically the, the main throughways in the middle of the city are going to be adjusted and hopefully it will help your, your kind of traffic jams in the city in the future. And hopefully that will uh, expand out from Pittsburgh if they keep going. So I don't think most of us like are either a train ride away <laughs> from work or going around the outside. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you're, I don't get to that part of the danger. Yeah. You, you go around 28 and everything and they've yeah. solved most of their problems. It feels over there. Most. Mass most transit of. is my friend. Mass transit is your friend. So, but I, but I, this is like for meetings and jobs and things, I'm usually going through that corridor, you know, and, and I see it. I yeah. see, I see the hell that is that corridor, uh, uh, from time to time. So it'd be good to see. And hopefully this, this helps and, and it'll help, uh, uh, general congestion as well. Did they so. talk about the tech? Um, the tech in this article? Mm-hmm. I don't, I think they just kind of talked about the concept itself more than okay. anything. I wonder if they're doing it by sensors or are they doing it by cameras? You know, wh- what's the... If I recall from the talk, and I don't know if they posted the talk that we filmed anywhere. But what's everybody pointing she at? She was waving. I was waving at you. Oh, yeah. Do you have something? Well, there's a comment from the chat room that I was trying to point to your attention. Oh, okay. And uh, from... Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he he ignores me despite the fact that I'm literally sitting over here waving my arms. 
My, my problem is you're over here and the monitors are over here that I'm paying attention to now. Uh, Kevin's saying Indiana PA has some fancy stoplights where the lights all turn red uh, when an emergency vehicle is heading to the intersection. Um, it even has a uh, voice that tells everyone to stay clear of the intersection. I was impressed. Um, I know the, the emergency vehicle response has been implemented a lot of different ways. Like I think we see that around the Dormont Mount Lebanon area up here. Yep. Mount, Mount Lebanon definitely has that because I've, yeah. I've seen it because it actually it doesn't um, it goes back it, it pauses the light cycle mm -hmm. so if you had a if you got a yellow light um, if you had a yellow light and the the emergency vehicle approaches and turns turns the light green on the uh, like on the cross traffic everybody gets to go and then once the emergency vehicle is out of distance it switches back to where your light took off so mm -hmm. you may get a you may go back to a yellow light for like a split second and then you're back to a red light so you sit through like two red light cycles wow. <laughs> i'm interested too with this though cuz bomb boulevard has like two speeds coming out of the city it's as fast as your car can go or <laughs> standing still <laughs> so i'm interested to see what happens with bomb boulevard traffic is it, is it just going to be like the autobahn 24 by 7 or, yeah. or how I, I i even even when it gets kind of lined up for something like this i think there's still going to be enough cars that that doesn't happen but no i've seen that too um so another story here uh, this one, uh, Brandon actually submitted this as well, and I think I think I might have tagged you, Chilla, and, and Doug as well, in, in some some responses. A new app that locks your kids' phones until they reply to your texts. Mm -hmm. You know, I know your 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 kid your kid's not not old enough for this, but is this something that you kind of look forward to? Yeah, it, it's definitely because it, it. I think that's one of the things that I hear the most from parents is why. It's been 20 minutes. Why can't they just take time to to reply to your text? You know, there's 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 no way they're not looking at their phone. Heck, in a movie theater anymore, I see eight bazillion tweens Snapchatting and and whatever. So you know, they're looking at the phone. Um, I'm interested to see how this works. So it, the the app is called uh, Reply ASAP. You can check it out, replyasap.co.uk. It's a UK company. It's for Android. Of course, you're not going to see something like this probably on iPhone for a good long time with permissions it would probably need. Um, but even on silent, it would it would you know come through and everything and kind of overrides that kind of thing. Um, so it's a interesting it's an interesting concept there. Well, you Kraus. You are you, are you Yeah, I have I have kids. I have lots of kids actually. <laughs> <laughs> Three are mine, and one is the step. So this turned into a I, different kind and, of question. And, and I paid a stepson's phone bill, and trust me, there have been plenty of times when I've called, called, and said, "Tell the child that I pay for his cell phone that he needs to reply back to his mother as soon as possible, please." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. And he's not a child anymore. I know, Chilla. Well, funny that, you, <laughs> funny that you say that because I look at it from the other side of things because. My father is on our family plan. And, and he never answers our he texts. He never answers texts. He never answers the phone. So he's your phone. child. <laughs> yeah. So if I want to talk to my dad. I have one of those too. I call my mother. <laughs> Mom, can you put dad on the phone, please? <laughs> so like, I'm even looking at this as an option for, hmm, is this for something parents. I could do? Mm, yeah. yeah. We might have to switch him over to Android now. Mm. Mm. But um, but no, it, it seems like an interesting idea. I mean, I think we've seen some some different approaches on something like this but again it's android and i'm sure it needs to like really take over your phone so i, th I thought it was interesting too because if the kid if the kid removes the app the, the parent also gets a notification that the app was removed nice nice yeah um doug was this actually happened off awesome cast but doug was talking about the fitbit ionic that was announced this week which is like this high-end 300 dollars fitbit watch um, and I don't know if you guys had really looked at much at it. I have not seen this one. So it's very, it's very nice. It's very interesting. But he, he posed an interesting question because it's like, okay, now here's another like super expensive watch that you, you can pick up. And we're looking at the video from Engadget if you're with us on the video. Um, and, and it's what you expect. It looks like a super high end, really smooth, nice display. 
you know, Fitbit and uh, not terribly nice looking, I don't feel, uh, you know, really blocky. And, 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 and you know, the, my question is like, okay, I have that Pebble 2 that I was in that batch. I almost kind of wish I got the refund so I could maybe go get an Apple Watch or something. But I don't have, uh, and I'm still concerned that this thing is not going to work after iOS 11 comes on, comes in, right? Because it was always like you need an update in order for that to start working. And I have like a week that this wouldn't work right with my phone every time I would upgrade the OS. So what is my option? It's not a $300 watch like this, right? You know, and, and I don't think I want something that high end. So there's an interesting gap that's happening here. Because Pebble, of course, bought, Pe or I'm sorry, Fitbit bought Pebble and really left the market without something in between. I feel that is uh, versatile enough to replace it. Well, Fitbit has other devices, though, mm. right? This it, is just but, adding to the line. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, but but there's but but Stork makes a very valid point. Fitbit has other devices, but all they do is track your steps and a couple key pieces. The Pebble didn't do, and maybe yours did, but the Pebble didn't do heart rate. Mm -hmm. But it but it had a slew of of apps and a whole developer culture underneath okay. it yeah let, let me tell you what my pebble does now that i like about it and i can't find an option that replaces it uh my pebble one gets messages from my phone whether text messages or any other app that has a message that comes through um and i get my heart rate and i get my sleep and get my steps and i can voice respond to texts tell me what else does that well, a three hundred dollar, three hundred dollar Fitbit. Right, right, or, right. And, or, and what else yeah. has an e yeah, ink but, has an e ink right. display that I get to charge once every six days? Oh, right. And good I, luck there. I think you create a create a very valid point and a market opportunity for somebody to come out with with that kind of device because there is nothing at the price point with the the number of capabilities that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see where someone's going to have to come along. I, I can't imagine that Fitbit's going to create a trim down device because they seem to be going in this all in future of OLED screens and, and whatnot. Brand is in the chat room. He's saying Garmin does a device that has a device that does all that. If that's the case, I'm looking in the Garmin. My, but, but it's expensive, isn't it? Is it? It, has G, it has, a, it has a GPS built into it too. Maybe it has different levels of it. Cause my brother, I think has a Garmin. Yeah, yeah, he has like a, I don't know, it's, it's a weird and bandy, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's, like, it's like 199 It reminds me of, the, it actually it reminds me of the Microsoft Band. Oh, okay. In, in the way it looks, the last I saw it. I haven't seen him for a while to see if he's still wearing that thing. But, um, I mean, it could be an option. I don't know. So. Yeah, the, the Forerunner, which kind of looks like it does a lot of what you're talking about with an e-ink display, runs at a 200. Mm -hmm. There's one that, there's one that, it has some trim down capability that looks like it's like a hundred and between a hundred and hundred and forty, but I don't know if those devices get your texts and whatnot. So you're, you're probably still looking at like two hundred bucks, mm -hmm. probably. And again, this was like probably uh, I got it. I got I think I got it cheaper for about one hundred twenty, hundred thirty dollars on the kick yeah. on the early Kickstarter. Uh, and I think this was aiming to be a hundred fifty dollar watch if it ever oh. hit market. Like I have basically an unreleased watch. Right. I have an unreleased device. Like, this is my Google Glass for my wrist as far as that goes. So, all right, uh, Kraus, I want to touch on your um, Amazon Echo story that you have in here. But first, I want to address a, a comment. Um, Brandon says that there's a new Amazon Echo show that's uh, been on commercials. So, so I, I think that the show has been unveiled about a month or two. And I can't remember if we've really gotten into what it was or anything. I don't know if it just didn't get our attention to talk about on the show, uh, uh, Chilla, uh, who lives in the future, mm -hmm. you know, we have to we have to disclaim that when we're talking about home automation and things that uh, talk to him and talk back. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you you you're deep into the 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 Amazon Echo ecosystem. Wanted to make sure I got that all right. Um, I, were you looking at the show as options? And I can't I can't remember if we discussed it on here or not. So, so I think we may have briefly discussed that they announced it a, a while back. I was not looking at the show, and the only reason I was not looking at the show is 
and and I'd be interested in you have an echo at home, correct? Yes, I do have an echo, and I forgot and I forgot which room it was in, and I had to yell for it the other day. Right, and, and that's exactly it. So, I I never walk over to my echo and ask it, you know, what's my what's my daily digest. I never walk over to it to to figure out information. Mm-hmm. So to have to walk over and look at a screen seemed like it didn't for our for how we're using it it didn't make a lot of sense the other the the video conferencing sounded pretty darn cool um but i'd have to buy like one for every person that i wanted to video conference with because i doubt they're going to pick up those devices where i could see myself even using this would be because i like I could see myself in the morning as I'm getting ready, looking at that screen, like to get the weather, to get content. If you could customize that screen with like a heads up, put my tasks down one side or things that my to do's, the weather, like where I wouldn't have to talk at the, to the device, but the screen kind of always gave me like a heads up display. I could see it. But I, I, yeah, I, I just couldn't find a lot of need for it. Apparently, uh, you need it in your baby changing room or when you're painting the wall. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like trying to find good shots of it, and they're just like a guy changing his kid. It's like, come, where's where's the feature of this? So, would it change though what you did with it if you had one? So, like for example. Um, if you were looking for something specific, maybe shopping wise or something, and instead of it just talking to you, it brought up is are you sure this is what you want? That kind of stuff. I think I feel like I feel like I I honestly I have a phone on my hip. Right. Yeah, yeah, I guess we're in my put pocket it that, way. that I would pull pull out for that. I feel like the 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 echo is something that's always on within shouting distance it's I, something I to yell at <laughs> yeah see i don't have this yet but, in my home but so. we have ours in our living room and our living room is on is on an uh, like is not next to our kitchen directly but it's adjacent we're constantly in the kitchen mm. saying yelling out shout a timer for 12 minutes because we're hard boiling eggs or you know what i mean it's like that it's that helpful friend that's in the next room that you, you want to do something yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh well, well to that i mean uh across you have you have something about some new features coming to the echo oh yeah they're gonna find they're gonna bring um amazon music streaming to multiple so basically full room i would say like sonos like features to the amazon echo or echoes if you have multiple because I guess right now you can have your Echo if you're an Amazon Music subscriber. Mm-hmm. It you know you can say hey play some Beatles and it'll just start playing. Well right, now right, it right. Will... I, I had to play some Insane Clown Posse the other day. It's right. Great. So now you can tell it you know play some music and it will stream it to however many Echoes you have. And I think it said that you could set up um, zones mm-hmm. kind of like you do with Sonos. Mm-hmm. So maybe you want to listen to. Something a little quieter on the first floor, but on the second floor, you want to get it rocking a little better, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I just thought it was an interesting idea. I know in our home, my wife and I have um, airplay speakers throughout the house. We, we, you know, we own a duplex, and so we have one, two, three, three airplay speakers throughout the house that we can play um, my wife's iTunes library from and it's great. So this is just another option to accomplish the same kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, 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 I think it's a, kind of a cool idea there. So, um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's cool to see they're getting some. You know, you know, this is one of those things where like just grab a bunch of dots when they have like the five pack special <laughs> or something. Right. Just, like these SEO. I'm like, okay, this is effective if it's literally everywhere. It's it's the way to turn your entire uh, uh, house office into um, hey computer from Star Trek, right? Mm-hmm. You know, computer but, do this. And, and and I guess my point is so, and, and we do that. And but the the trick is, I, I guess our floor plan 
isn't, I mean, it's not huge. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I put, if you, if you put the echo in a hall, like in your upstairs hallway and you put it in your living room or dining room downstairs, you're, you're probably typically a voice and you don't even have to, I mean, you're not even really yelling, I would say you're, it's always within voice reach. So I feel like you don't need one of these in every room per se. Now, if you wanted to do the music thing where if you didn't want the entire upstairs to hear something, you'd, yeah, you'd have to put them in specific rooms. And I do like, I, I really like the concept that you can set up the groups and say, you know, play this upstairs and upstairs could be a collection of the, the, the echoes that are up there. Um, but again, I, I guess I, I, having a hard it's a hard sell for me to to go to a show or to go to one of these actually in every room in the house hmm. awesome katie mm-hmm. tell me about parking in pittsburgh parking in pittsburgh we can use google maps now to help us find parking in pittsburgh we're one of a very few group of like how many i think it was just a handful of 20 something 25. 25 cities that were um put on the the google maps you essentially go into your Google map and you can find parking spaces, which is kind of super cool because especially if you're new to Pittsburgh, because parking can be anywhere. And the other thing I think is really nice about it is they'll give you kind of like when it's busy, when it's not busy, because there's a lot of times where there's lots or or garages where you're thinking, oh, I can find a space easy at 9 a.m. and no way in heck. So th- this is how is it kind of seeing frequency and everything like that? Because, I mean, is it like a waste thing where it's kind of seeing, hey, there's a lot of people kind of ended up over this bike parking lot or something? I'm sure. I'm sure it's kind mm-hmm. of just like keeping an eye on where we're at and where your phone ends up at and where you spend a, a period of time or you stop moving like mm-hmm. at a certain speed probably or something along mm-hmm. those lines. Because I know well, Waze is, at least has the, hey, here's where parking is around mm-hmm. where you're going. You know, and say, do you want to go to the lot instead of like, you know, Heinz Field and it's like, here's the parking lots versus or I'm going to this place in like, say, East Liberty. Right. And there's a parking lot like next to it. Uh, So I wanted to I want to target that one next to, you know, Alpha Lab and not at Alpha Lab because that's not going to help me because then I got to circle the block. Right. Well, it's it's fun because it's like it's called using machine learning to predict parking difficulties difficulty Ooh. yeah it's it's a fun little article on their blog on google's research blog that talks about you know how they figure out um like how many people will be parking at certain times and but to be fair machine learning is like the phrase that's being used everywhere these oh, days yeah. so but it, it's it's a fun little article like if you want to read more about how they're doing it and, mm. and ground truth data and different model features and it's pretty and, and when machine learning is is paired with the Internet of Things, it just makes magic happen. Magic. Magic. There you go. <laughs> oh, I, do you know? So, did, and I was reading this 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 post in here. Mm-hmm. Did are they? Is the machine learning monitoring the ins and outs of the actual garages? Is it using it looks telemetry like, data off of Android devices? I think that's what it's doing. Like, yeah. Because it's, it's looking, like, if you look at a certain area, it's a whole bunch of cars. There's not a lot of cars. Hey, 130 cars stopped at this point. Yes. yes. And disappeared, and, you know, out of GPS, say, if it's a garage, right? I, you know, like that, that kind of behavior, right? And then I guess they, they then monitor, you know, 100 cars all of a sudden showed up in this location and drove out. And then they would have right. to know how many spots that parking lot had. Okay. Mm-hmm. Especially, yeah, and that would make sense, especially during like a rush hour time, I guess, right? Well, it, at first, they're really only giving you like kind of a heat map, right? Yeah. It's going to be a, a, a difficult parking situation or an easier part. What was, oh, I forget what the wording I read was. Um, but I just think what, what I think is kind of neat is while I was on vacation, in Geneva on the Lake, Ohio, the hot spot of the world. Oh, yeah. I played there once in my old band. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we were up doing some winery uh, hunting, as we like to do. And, of course, I had Google Maps directing me to the next winery. And all of a sudden, I noticed, as I was driving down the road, that there was a red line on the road. And I thought, hmm, how interesting. Geneva on the Lake, Ohio. How would this must be an anomaly? Mm-hmm. And don't you know there was construction? And Google knew. 
So that I was actually pretty impressed. Well, I think you're also getting a lot of that data from Waze as well, and right. using that kind yeah, of they're pull, yeah, they're so. pulling all the data. No, no, from I, yeah, you definitely see that in like small towns. Yeah, so. but I was like in the middle of nowhere, and all of a sudden there was a red line. Up. I was approaching the red line, and I, I thought it was wow. trust me, my big tour, brother is watching. My tour of the middle of nowhere in small towns from earlier this year, it's definitely out there and it's very effective. That's why I Waze everywhere. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, what people laugh at me all the time. Don't you know where you're going? Like, if you don't live in Pittsburgh, sometimes you don't understand the fact that it could be take you five minutes one day and hours the next day. Exactly. On what's I don't know that they popped up construction here. I don't know that there's an accident here, and mm-hmm. I need to take this whole other way to get home. Right? Um, no, absolutely. Like, it's like you should have it on almost all the time, like to get home. Mm-hmm. Just point. remember, the yellow cone is the state flower of Pennsylvania. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Um, from that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Wait, Sorg. Yes. We have some really cool events coming up with some really cool I people. I was transitioning to the really cool events and the really cool people. Can you well, tell I'm us about those, just Missy? keeping you on task Wait, for things. What That's is happening job. with the really That's cool events and, the, and, and, yes. and, th- and things and stuffs? So uh, we're going to be having Mommy an awesome and chat. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have an awesome chat live with uh, Joe Woes from yes, formerly the, the Tunzium, now doing really cool art stuff. Um, he's going to be in tunes, among other things. Yes. Uh, there was just an announcement the other day that we'll probably bring up as well. So he's going to be in tomorrow for, for an awesome chat with us. Uh, keep an eye out for going live for that one tomorrow. Uh, at 11 is, uh, yeah, 11 a.m. We're planning to do that. The events are on the Facebook page for the Awesome Cast, and we'll go live there as well. And we've also got tomorrow Terry Orlovsky of uh, WordCamp. So similar to our PodCamp, but specifically geared toward WordPress. Uh, then we have James. How do you pronounce his last name, Sorg? Uh, Deegan. Okay, James Deegan. Uh, he's going to be in studio next week. Mm-hmm. We have our creative coffee. So if you just want to kind of come out and bounce some ideas off of a group of fun, creative people, join us on September 9th at 1 p.m. And then we're going to be talking on the 12th with Susan and Vance of Ohio Linux Fest. Isn't that right? Absolutely. So, yeah, we've got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. And PodCamp is also in our very near future. So mm-hmm. I will be shilling and pushing that stuff on you guys the the next month or so there's gonna Woo-hoo! be some good stuff there some uh different concepts for what we're gonna be doing uh for for podcasting and everything like that and and teaching you guys twitter and, and wordpress and the such down at point park university september 30th and october 1st that's right it's two months long and the meet and greet is going to be right here in the studio in uh sorgatron media it's not two months long it just spans two it's months. two <laughs> months <laughs> There's, there's a difference. Two months of pod camp. It's never been done before <laughs> and probably will never be done again. I would cry. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Krauss, Crazy Krauss on the Twitter. Yes, sir. Uh, anything you want to plug? Are you an office? I champion? have nothing to plug. Are you an office champion? I don't know. I'm just an office worker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh, you're gonna get it. We were gonna get that. Aww. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now Did you're the fun. Office 365 champion. You Yay. are the champion. Man, somebody probably owns a sponsorship check after this. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, dude, it is the Scare House live Fridays on Facebook Live. Yeah, you got it. You what got it. it. I'm so impressed noon? now. Noon? Yes. Oh well, my gosh, you even knew the time. <laughs> Look out. I was super right. excited. The lunch break, I mean, right? <laughs> Obviously. Um, how many months has this taken for him to get this? Oh my gosh, we've been doing it, what, oh, four plus months? I'll and forget it. Say, and next week, it's all changing. Yeah, no. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> and next week, it all goes away. You know? And Lies. gone. And no. gone. John Chichilla, chillatech.net. That's me, Chilla on the Twitters, John Chilla on the Facebook, and hopefully one day I too can become an office champion. Mm-hmm. You would have been in the studio, man. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And of course, check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great stuff coming on. New episodes of the broadcast, a new one that's joined our network recently. Uh, Scarehouse has some really interesting stuff coming up. Yeah. Trust me, it gets really interesting. <laughs> and uh, a whole bunch of shows, our comic book friends, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, and everything else. And of course, the awesome chats like we discussed. And check out the entire back catalog at awesomecast.com. Thank you to our chat room, the uh, interactors that have joined us. Wheels, you're hanging out out there. Kevin, Brandon, 
uh, interacting with us all night long. Thank you, producer Missy. Thank you, everybody out there. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.